fantastic, guys. Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel. All important weekly update. Uh, none more important than this here, again, with our um, um, un undeniable triple bounce. Again, we've done this multiple times. Stock is in free fall. Well, let's be real. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see the action next week. We're still a couple of weeks removed of earnings here. Uh, coming up, I believe, on May 9th. And um, uh, stock is uh, trading a, a against zero market value right now, which is um, uh, a head scratcher. There's no doubt about it with the potential that this company has. Um, it's as if this company wants to do harm. And uh, I see no greater opportunity in the stock market than with highly on holdings right here. Um, it's the one of a couple stocks that I would look to um, increase positions here. No doubt about it. Anything under $10, I believe right here is a steal. Um, I believe this uh, company does everything that they're supposed to do. Um, they've grown the company now, hiring's up over 200. Um, company vision is absolutely right in line with where I wanna be to address um, the uh, carbon emissions profiles of our trucking fleets, um, and they are searching drastically for a solution. They, they don't have time. Um, they're going to leave it up to others like Hylion and Nikola and Hyzon and Tesla and those of the like that are going to be able to sit across from industry and deliver a, 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 a bottom line. Total cost of ownership, this is something that is very, very important here as we monitor the highly on opportunity going forward, making sure that they're going to be able to um, come to um, some sort of realization of mass scale and integration. We are not there. Certain things need to happen prior to that mark, but I'm gonna to continue to foot stomp the message here. First things first, let's get some housekeeping out of the, out of the way. I wanna thank the devote community. There's been some kind words said about me over on Twitter. Uh, for you guys that um, want to know my honest opinion, I hate Twitter. I think it's the dumbest thing ever. A waste of my freaking time, to be honest with you. Um, I'm a few beers deep in this, Hylion, so I've been spending most of my afternoon on the beach uh, for some much-needed R&R. &R. Um, I bust my ass, guys. Um, outside of working very, very hard on a 17-year service career um, and a head coach for my son, uh, as well as producing um, very frequent YouTube content. I'm a con uh, content. I'm a very busy guy, um, as well as being in the gym at five o'clock in the morning for seven days a week. So please understand, uh, this is something that I absolutely I feel like is critical. But for the kind words that have been said uh, through the Twitter feed, um, somebody responded to me and and. Um, uh, had some words for me with regard to my um, criticism of Hylion. I, I don't care. <laughs> I'm a lone voice on YouTube. And if anybody thinks that I haven't done my fair share in advocating for this company, uh, do they deserve it? No, no, they don't. They don't deserve it. Um, they came to public markets too early. They sure did. Um, I was under a, a way different impression that they were at least further along on the product cycle than what they led on. Um, I believe that they used an agility order to create a lot of hype. And where is that agility order now? It's fallen on deaf ears. And I think uh, for a lot of the bulls out there, um, I think they don't like it when I speak along the bearish thesis. So I tend to keep that a little bit to a minimum. Why? Because that does not speak to my bullish thesis on highly on holdings. It doesn't speak to it. Um, and my 12,100 shares, I have not added to my shares. Uh, I'm closely monitoring this right now. Um, I'm looking at uh, selling some premium against the $3 puts um, and uh, maybe even just buying some shares out right here. It, it, strategically, I've got one more account to kind of fill out. I've got about 6,000 shares in one account and about 4,000 in another. 2,000 is in the brokerage account. So I'd like to fill that out a little bit because if this thing does go where I know it's going to go eventually, I mean, I just need to wait it out and play the game. Um, right now, I mean, the stock's getting raped. It's just that simple. Um, pretty typical uh, where we look at a company like Tesla that's trading at 212 times 
forward earnings and you got guys crawling all over themselves to buy that stock. It's just idiotic. It's stupid. Um, so is the stock market, quite frankly. I mean, people don't even know what they're doing and they're making money. Um, people like myself who absolutely know what they're doing and can earmark value. Um, I've got people coming on and they're telling me how I've got all the wrong uh, reasons for looking at this company and the opportunity that exists therein. And um, the time will tell. Uh, you could be right. You could be wrong. It certainly doesn't mean I'm a bad or a good investor. It just means that this company is firing on all right, the right cylinders. It's looking at an addressable market here that is absolutely worth going after. And again, it, it's as if Hylion is being priced as if they're going to go and cause damage to um, the world as we know it. Um, it's as if somebody does not want to see this company succeed. Somebody else is going to come and do the same thing. Really? Hylion's doing it. Hylion's doing it just fine. They're looking to integrate with the OEMs. My question is, how devote are the OEMs to partnering with Hylion? Is it going to take Hylion just becoming its own OEM to, to get the point across? Is it going to take them reverse engineering and making their own e-axle, right, to put into their own product? Is it, is it meant stepping forward and just saying, look, we're just going to do this on our own. Now, I don't know. I, I think Hylion has done what they've done for good reason. Um, I, I think reinventing the wheel at this point, OEMs, you guys got to understand there are decades, decades of learnings that go into the big five uh, OEMs. We're talking about uh, Mac. We're talking about Freightliner, which is the largest. We're talking about Peterbilt, which uh, Hylion is uh, uh, partnered with, as well as Volvo Penta and International and a couple of others. I'm sorry if I'm uh, forgetting a couple. And those conglomerates uh, own multiple of those OEMs. Um, I think PACAR uh, is in the mix there to own a couple of those OEMs. I'm pulling off a memory, guys, here. And um, it, it's a very elite crowd. It's just that simple. And if Hylion is as devote with both Peterbilt, and I believe they own one other, I, I, can't, I can't remember. I don't believe it is Mac. I believe it's one other um, that PACAR owns, um, both with Peterbilt and another OEM. And then, of course, Freightliner, right, which is up close to 75,000 units per year. It's insane. Peterbilt, just over 40,000 units per year. The, the question becomes... And this is a question that I, I, I was kind of being an asshole on Twitter. I, I really was because I'm pissed off. I, I, don't, I don't understand why I'm a 17 year military service guy. If you can't give a guy like myself the nod, it pisses a guy like me off. And, and I've given every indication. I, I gave a very, very nice um, introduction to myself, my family through investor relations uh, to Thomas Healy uh, through the old investor relations um, uh, regime uh, that's been shit canned uh, since then. Um, and, and it seems like my, my solicitations are, are being uh, felt on deaf ears. Uh, no problem. I still sleep easy at night. No problem. The invitation is still open. But I would ask each and every one of you to con continue the foot stomp on Twitter. Do it. Um, I, I'm monitoring it like a viper. E each and every well-laid comment, okay? And you'll get a follow out of me. I'll follow you. Tell you what, do a tweet to Thomas Healy directly in Hylion, um, make it to Hylion stock as well. Why not? Uh, put that pressure on Twitter. There's no problem. If these guys want to go for prolonged amounts of time, there is not one day that goes by where I don't have the opportunity to tweet about uh, 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 Hylion. The problem is um, it's not my company. Um, I'm just a share owner in the company. No problem. Uh, the very responsibility to provide the transparency on the goings on at Hylion Holdings rests with Hylion. And they've embarked on a Q&A session. They've embarked on this ride and drive. It sounds lovely. It does run. I give them that credit. Um, all, all the while, the uh, stock price has been uh, absolutely run through the gutter. And um, I'm not really sure what's going to take it for to get their attention um, are they going to wait till this thing goes to 50 cents? The irony in the whole thing is, you know, the board of directors are being gifted a bunch of stock for free. Um, the initial stock owners in this company, th this is just truth, guys. Okay. I'm a bull on the company. I, I absolutely am. But the, the reality is it doesn't seem as if Hylion is working with a sense of urgency. From my perspective, I don't think they are. Um, if I was Thomas Healy, I'd be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
Um, I, I think he comes on. I think he ta- talks about the same cliche stuff. He's got the opportunity to come on with the Independent Investor Channel and do an engaging interview, an engaging interview. Um, I will not fluff his ass. Uh, I'm just a regular family guy, okay? A coach, military serviceman, social media uh, influencer and creator. And the invitation is straight up. A lot of people think, oh, well, you did that interview. Therefore, he's not going to come on because he's butthurt about how, how it is that you approach. Man, to hell with all that. YouTube is about having a voice. You and Tube. It means that you, in fact, have a voice. And a lot of people watch me because they feel like I talk the way that a lot of people want to talk and don't have the balls to talk that way. They don't. Okay. A lot of people come on and they, they karate chop you and they elegantly talk into the microphone and they, 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 they split screen every, every half a second and they jump in and out. And my God, this is great. Yeah, this is awesome. This guy is crazy. This is like a roller coaster. This is incredible. This guy's an amazing YouTuber. I don't care about any of that. None of it. Okay. My YouTube channel will grow because I do have balls. It's just that simple. My summary of the world I talk about stock market investing all the time, but the way that things are going right now in the world is insane, okay? The stock market is no different, okay? You've got communities out there that are following a a dying uh, company that uh, has uh, movies, AMC, uh, at their doors. Walk into GameStop, okay? You tell me. There's never any more than three or four customers in the GameStop. They've got overhead of what? A few thousand dollars a month to hold on to those brick and mortar stores, to sell a bunch of uh, video games that have been sold by a bunch of smokers that come on that need a few bucks. GameStop makes a few dollars profit. And these are the companies that people gravitate to, man. It's it's idiotic. And it's as if as time goes along, we get dumber, to be honest with you. Company like this comes along, it trades in correlation right now with Hyzon. It trades in direct correlation with Nikola. Hylion cannot cannot, and mark my words, it cannot trade outside of the absolutely specific lockstep correlation with Nikola from day to day. Can't do it. It will not go up unless Nikola goes up. Nikola goes up 24 cents. Hylion, rest assured, is going to be up four cents. Now for the following four or five days, it's going to be down straight because the market is not buying what this company is putting down. It's not buying what it's putting down. What is the company putting down? Okay. Here's the thing. Put forward these opportunities to come on to a social media outlet. And who am I? Okay. I'm just a nobody. No big deal. Um, Thomas Healy has done interviews with YouTube channels with as little as 50 subscribers, 50 market, 50. I'm one of the original gangsters on YouTube. It's just that simple. Why? Because I eat, breathe and sleep investing. Okay. It's what I do. You want to come and pose like a YouTuber? Great. You want to use YouTube as your public learning forum? Great. Do that. I would do investing whether or not I had you kind folks or not. It's just that simple. And it's that no BS type of approach that gets me favor on social media. And trust me, I'll continue to get favor because the world needs more people like me that can sit across from people and call BS at the first sign of BS. It's just that simple. And there's a few soft soft spots with this company that they need to improve upon, okay? There's a lot going on right now that we're going to unpack in this weekly update here with Hyleon. The people are at the end of the rope, okay? And there's YouTube uh, personalities that are coming on that have no other opportunity or no other option but to come on and just suckle at the teat of Hyleon Holdings, okay? I have not done that. I won't do that. I'll continue to be an investor in the company. It's just that simple. Um, whether or not you guys think that I'm like down on the company or I'm going to sell it next week or whatever it is, that ain't going to happen. I'm going to be here next year and I'm going to be here two years down the line and I'm going to be here five years down the line because this company is going to make it. It is. But the question is, in the eyes of the market, have they done what has been necessary to provide ample support for uh, the the stock here as a publicly traded company. Uh, That's the delicate balance, okay? And as time goes on and on and on, we have nothing left but to scrutinize what has been promised to investors uh, and um, missed 
in way of timelines. Sure. Right. And it's amazing to me how there's certain people out there that just want to ignore that very thing. Okay. Coming forward with certain promises in the investor presentation, we were supposed to be at the end of 2024 doing 15,000 units uh, of each, the hybrid EX and the Hypertruck ERX. All right. We had the original uh, agility order of a thousand hypertruck orders, a thousand with what we've been asked to recalibrate in our minds with regard to a thousand hypertruck orders is that the OEMs are not going to offer that degree of build slots anyway. Okay. So what is it going to take 25 years to fill this slot with uh, agility? as they pick up 10 orders per year? Is that what they're gonna do? Five orders per year for agility for the next 25 years? Is that what we're gonna do? See, that's the thing is you, you throw those numbers out there and the sleight of hand was that they were binding ERX orders. We were able to do the Calix on it. Say, wow, that, that's a nice, that's a nice uh, profit here for, for Hylion, you know, coming out of the gates. We have heard nothing about that order except for it's downgrading to a non-binding order at this point, right? So what are investors supposed to think here in this bridging year? They've hired on this massive sales team. What, what's going on? What's going on? What is the conversion? The only color that we can expect to be provided to shareholders is coming up right around the corner on this first earnings call. And, and I tell you what, each and every one of these over the next uh, two years, these eight earnings calls over the next two years, 20 months are going to be critical. Um, if there's any misstep at all, this, this, st this stock's going down below a dollar. It's just, it's just that simple. I, I don't know what else to say because it, it, it doesn't seem to be that its acceptance in the marketplace is providing any type of uh, acknowledgement to anything that's been done thus far. Uh, and it's the very reason why I invest in the company uh, is the progress that's happened thus far. We'll talk about that a little bit here. And then it's it's vision for the future. But what what gives here? Are, are we creating back pressure uh, of such a uh, magnitude to have a, a Tesla 2 on our hand here? Th that's the thing is, the amazing part about these companies is they have uh, an uh, inherent ability to create such a disconnect between the goings on at the company and the opportunity that exists therein uh, and the actual stock price. And that, that is what's going on right now. Uh, people will tune in and they'll say, well, you're wrong. It's because they're looking at it in the acute. It's just that simple. Okay. If you're new to the highly on opportunity and you're looking at the stock price at $3 and 40 cents, which is, is stupid. It's really stupid. And the cool thing about YouTube is I get to have a voice and I'm not afraid to come on and say it's stupid. Um, is it stupid that I tweet all the time about Hylion and I haven't got one single acknowledgement at all to the work that's put, been put in? Have I put in enough work to render at least a shot out, a tweet that says, at independent investor, thank you. Is that too much to ask? That takes three seconds. With the amount of hours, with the amount of dollars, with the amount of thousands of different viewers on the channel that represent this community that are sticky, the very, very fabric uh, 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 on this community that holds everything together and will hold it together into the future. Here's what's going to happen. People know the potential of this company so much because they've had years to think about it now. They've had years to be so pissed off about this company that when this thing goes up, nobody's going to sell. If they feel the same way about me, I won't sell until I reach my first milestone. I don't care what the stock does. When it's at forty-seven dollars, I will not be. I will not be coming on and being like, "Hey, I'm good. I'm up a half a million bucks. I'm going to sell the company now." I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not. First look, hundred bucks. Maybe looking at some interesting things around the hundred dollar mark. That's it. Hundred dollars. We should be looking at about a ten, twelve billion dollar company, which this company is all of one point five billion with a sneeze overnight here. Trading at $600 million is just idiotic. It's idiotic. It's being provided zero value for the business that exists. And people are like, yeah, because it's worth nothing. You're a fucking idiot. Get out of my house. Get out of my face with that. There's so many idiots 
out there. And it's quite amazing because those are the idiots that have just as much uh, opportunity to come into my opportunity and say, man, alive, I don't know shit about this company, but this guy seems pretty convicted on it. I'm going to throw a hundred bucks on it. That's the easiest 10,000 bucks you'll ever make in your life. Easiest. Um, unless you want to go, I don't know, lay road for it, go weld, earn 10,000 bucks in six months. You can do that if you want. Uh, I don't know. No, but um, tweet for me. Let's have a Twitter storm this week. It worked last time. There was a ton of people that went in there and did it. Um, and I think if there's nothing else uh, that is uh, of interest, I, I don't feel like it's the time right now to let this guy off the hook. I don't. Now, not at $4 a share. Not at $3.40 a share. I, I think this is insane. Um, I think we're getting to the point where um, if they collectively come together and they look at each other and they all say, everything's fine. Everything's hunky dory. Yeah, it's, it's good. Elaine, how are we looking? Dan, how are we looking, man? Are we good? Sherry, we're all good. How the hell can a human being look across the table at, 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 with what's going on right now and say that everything is okay? Uh, everything is not okay. Uh, if it was a privately traded company, I could give two shits what you do. I just don't care. To do whatever it is that you got to do with your time. It's no problem. Okay. But everything is not fine. Everything is not fine. They need to do more. Okay. Oh, they're doing, I'm happy with what they're doing. No, you're not. No, you're not. If they were doing more and people had some conviction that this grand vision, the vision, they keep using the word vision um, and dominant. Okay. Uh, I don't care how big your market cap is. You're not dominating anything uh, with a $600 uh, million market cap. I know companies that are have market caps of $30 million, uh, that are making more revenue than Hylion right now. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. Why are we in this situation? Because they came to public markets too early. That's a fact, Jack. That is a fact. The SPAC opportunity allowed this company to fully fund their business plan, and I totally get it. But I tell you what, what's really going to be the tipping point for me is when they come out and dilute shareholders and start to raise more capital because they they need to push out timelines again and again and again and again and again, uh, and 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 make sure that they uh, can can deliver on their promise in 2028. Um, that that's going to be the end all be all. Look, guys, here's the thing. I digress. This is a phenomenal. Phenomenal opportunity with Hylion. We are in a bridging year. It's just that simple. The question is, how are we going to get from where we are now at the end of April until the end of 2023 when scale up is supposed to happen for this company? Does anybody have any ideas? If you do, I read through the comments intimately. I come on this not to blah, blah, and toot my own horn on this deal. The Hylion project is exclusive to the independent investor channel and my desire to do at least a once a week frequency and update on this company and what the progress is. Now, the only thing I have to do is speculate on what's going on because they've taken not only an extended quiet period going into uh, uh, the first earnings call for 2022, but there's been no news at all. OK, um, there's been a few interviews, which has done nothing but tank the stock. Um, I'm sure they're going to the ACT Expo, which if I was going to judge uh, the renderings from last year's ACT Expo, where Thomas Healy cleaned the house on the uh, panel uh, when he was asked to go and um, provide his insights uh, on a panel discussion, um, the tank stocked, uh, the, the stock tanked and it, it provided who are these buyers that are stepping up from all of this uh, outreach? Um, perhaps maybe we need to do something a little bit different uh, on this approach, but that's what they want to do. They're going to continue the road shows and they're going to continue the ACT Expo, none of which is going to provide any type of bottom line sales. Uh, and if there was any way to move up that timeline, I think it would be in their best interest because uh, I have a very, very lean expectations about how far they can stretch this thing uh, with their current business plan, which is the silver lining with highly on holdings um, in, in, in meeting that uh, opportunity to mass scale up, which we've been provided no color on. Uh, we've been told that there's 150 build slots here secured going into 2024. Um, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen a company that is so talkative about 
their uh, first preliminary build slots, and then it stops there. What is it that we can expect to render from Peterbilt, which is one of the questions that I posed to uh, one of the gentlemen, of course, that won an interview um, because they're so polished and um, they're not a scathing and, 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 and so much of a freaking open speaker like I am uh, to challenge what's going on with this company. What is Peterbilt saying? Um, what, are, what if Peterbilt pulls the chocks on this deal? Where does that leave this company? It leaves it with a good idea. There's no doubt about it. Is a good, lots of people have good ideas. I cover $30 million companies all the time with really good ideas. Um, this is given credit right now for about 600 million of a good idea because of its cash position. Um, if it loses its relationship with its OEM, uh, you're being presumptuous, Ryan. This is not fair. Why? Why is that not fair? Why is it not fair for someone to come to the table that gives a sweeter deal than P Peterbilt? What is Hylion going to provide to Peterbilt as an incentive? to retrofit this or fit this off of the OEM lines for the new trucks that roll off of Peterbilt uh, at the OEM hubs. What's the incentive there? Is it going to cut into the $30,000 uh, of profit that Hylion is going to make on the margin to, to, to make these sales that everybody gets excited about, which have been far and few between in the landscape? And that's to be expected as we stretch this timeline out as we look to achieve 2023 but the time is now the time is now um my patience has been gone for a long long time in this company it's just that simple um will they will they make something yes yes i do but um i i, I just don't see, i don't see a sense of urgency on this i don't um i'm getting frustrated by the interviews it's the same damn questions over and over again um and thomas healy provides his same coin dancers he doesn't provide any transparency, zero knowledge, acknowledgement about the stock being in the absolute shitter. It's in the shitter, okay? The stock is embarrassing. They should take it off of the Hylion.com website. I don't know why they display it as if it's something of pride. It's not. It's, it's embarrassing. It really is. It is something that needs work. It is. Building shareholder value as the CEO is something that they absolutely need to do. It's just that simple. Um, and, and I'm not sure. Uh, maybe somebody is so naive to what's going on right now that perhaps maybe they do sit around the board and they all are really just, you know, caught up in themselves. And, hey, would you like some coffee? And, hey, how's it going? How's the family? And everything is hunky-dory. And not everything is hunky-dory. It's terrible. Like, shareholders are stuck with the bag. And we don't understand where this company is going. I just don't understand it. To help provide a little Twitter pressure, I will be monitoring out uh, this week uh, and providing my uh, quote tweet uh, back to Thomas Healy. It won't do any good. It won't do any good. Uh, again, my patience on Twitter is, is gone. Uh, I have no faith at all. There would be, there would be no acknowledgement um, to a good guy like myself, man, who does this on, on his own. And my patients are wearing thin as well. They really are. You can tell throughout this video. You, you really can. You can tell. And I'm, I'm a human being, man. I'm not a, I'm not a robot. You know, really just love wasting my time coming on here and talking about a company that I love probably more than they do, because I'm sure at five o'clock, they shut the doors, they go home. There's no sense of urgency. Sell out a little bit. You know, when was the last time they stayed late? We stayed until 11, 12 o'clock last night, right? Looking to drive this order home that we were working on. And we weren't going to leave until it was closed up, relentless, perseverance, right? It's, it's because when you're given things, you don't appreciate what you're given. It's that simple. And this company was given the opportunity of a lifetime. It seems like to me, they're, 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 gonna, they're gonna go ahead and they're gonna execute on this business plan. And it, it's up in the air on where they end up and what they consider to be true execution on said business plan. From, from the funding that they received from this back process and specifically the warrants that they called once. I mean, they've already skimmed uh, uh, investors once on this deal through the issuance of warrants that they had no intention whatsoever of keeping for the long term. They called it the very second they could. They took their funding and they put it in the bank. Use it. Use it for the better. There should be an absolute sense of urgency. If you're going to take this company and you're going to be the dominant class eight player in the space, you need to be knocking down people's doors because 
I hear grumblings and people will watch me and they're like, man, why is Ryan so pissed off today? Well, I, I, I'm pissed off about a lot of things with regard to this company. Uh, I'm a very happy man. Um, I've had people tune into the channel and they're like, I can't watch this guy. He's pissed off. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm pissed off because I don't have that uh, sense of comfort with this company that they're doing everything that they need to do to persevere and make it right. 2024. Okay. Yep. Supply chain issues, yada, yada, yada. Okay. I guess those were things that you could not foresee before you came to public markets, right? And highly on shareholders, man, they're, they're willing to give uh, every single latitude. They're able to give every single long leash with this company to make sure that they're provided everything that they need in way of time. Um, all we're asking for is a little bit of give back here. That's it. Um, me personally, I don't think a 30 minute uh, interview is too much to ask. I don't. Uh, but um, my hope is at zero. It's no problem. I have other things going on in my life. I'm not a multimillionaire like Thomas Healy, just like a lot of the shareholders uh, like me. They're not millionaires. They've, they've taken a, a company uh, under their wing. They've supported the company uh, and to be provided zero give back, zero. And they think that the interviews that they've been doing over the last couple months have helped the situation. I don't, I don't think so. I really don't. There's been a few key moments for me that have been like, eh, it's nice, but I'm not involved in that. Uh, I'm on an island with my sharing of highly on holdings. It's as if I'm covering a different company, my idea of highly on, not highly ons. It's that simple. So the opportunity and the vision, let's just change the tone a little bit. You guys can tell I'm obviously fired up this week here, entering into a week that, um, I mean, are we going to see under three? Probably. I pr Probably under one. I don't know. You know, I've, I've got investors. I had an investor admit this week, and and it, it's I'm not going to name him by name. But I don't want to embarrass him. But, um, you know, being down a few hundred thousand dollars in this name is stupid. Everybody in this company is down right now. They're down. And we can't be, be, be provided one single iota of return of, of common courtesy. Um, and, and this is to some of the other folks that have reached out to more direct in way of a letter. And they couldn't even respond in way of, hey, we received your letter. Thank you very much for, for your, uh, um, for your uh, inquiry. And we'll get back to you as soon as the, that we can. They never even received uh, any type of response of receipt. Uh, of, of this opportunity. What, what, is that, what does that mean? Is it a slap to the face to the people submitting to say, you know what, we've already got our money. That's the perception that people draw on this type of thing. They really do. Different schools of thought, people will watch me and they'll say, well, you're, you're wrong, Ryan. You know, this is the best opportunity ever. And they're doing everything that they can possibly do. I don't know. I guess my definition of everything that they can possibly do is be willing to Go the nth degree for your cause. And I, I don't see that. I don't see that. Not yet. Not yet. I'm hoping that when this thing comes to fruition and there is an opportunity for a little bit of tailwind, that that'll provide some of that opportunity for these guys to get a little bit aggressive and not sabotage their own product. Uh, I'm sick and tired of hearing Thomas Healy talk about the hybrid EX as if it's dead on arrival. I mean, it wasn't two months after the product came available and, 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 and it is available right now on Hylion.com that he said that because this Cummins engine came to, to, to the marketplace, that autom automatically his product was dead on arrival. If I'm a fleet of 15 to 20 truck uh, trucks, the Hybrid EX is a perfect product for me. It's an entry into a, a greener transportation future for my fleet. You're telling me that just because you're not getting the interest based on the people that you're sitting across, that it's automatically a reason to just shit can the whole pro program and just decide that the hybrid EX is now dead on arrival. I wish you would just stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. Let people buy the hybrid EX. And this is what I don't understand between Sherry Baker's uh, uh, projections for 2022, garnering two to three million in top end revenue. I don't get it. Um, if it's something that um, is not going to garner a lot of interest in the class eight trucking space, how the hell are you going to pull two to three million in revenue? That'd be interesting. And it'd be interesting to have them actually answer questions the way I ask it, not the way Fisher and uh, Delaney and all those other idiots ask their questions. Mark Delaney takes him five minutes to ask his question anyway, because he's a stuttering idiot. 
And he can't actually put two words together without saying, uh, 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 in between his questions. But these are the folks that are driving the highly on narrative right now, downgrading the stock consistently. Um, the last upgrade they had to neutral, hey, that's great. You got it down to a couple bucks. I mean, really, this is a token price right here. The, the stock price is resting right up against the actual um, uh, cash value of the company. And right now, read a nice article right up that just this week on Hylion. Hylion is being given no enterprise value zero. If you can justify paying forward earnings on a company like Tesla that is so astronomically overvalued, it's not even funny. And you look at a company like Hylion that basically you're paying $3.40 for the cash on the books and you're, you're paying zero by purchasing one single share of Hylion, you're paying zero right now for the business. Zero, zero. Right now, the stock market looks at Hylion and says that it will not do anything. Zero. Eh, Thomas Healy will continue to do his Q&A interviews and he'll continue to put people in his prototype uh, Hypertruck ERX and run them around the parking lot. It's really, really cute. You know, it's got what, 2,750 miles on the Hypertruck ERX. Get that son of a bitch out on the road and drive the son of a bitch. Put some freaking 80,000 pounds of payload behind it. Detmar has done more in way of providing product validation than Hylion has at this point. Why? Why? How are we not forcing the dialogue forward? I deal with one specific $30 million company. The CEO does two interviews per week, two interviews per week, and is a $30 million company, 30 million. Company trades at 25 cents a share, 25 cents. Is that where we're going? Is that what we need to get to before uh, Thomas Healy realizes uh, that, that it's serious right now? To provide that awareness, perhaps maybe they know something that we don't know. More color will be provided on the earnings call coming up. The progress thus far on the company is actually marked progress. Uh, I want to start with hirings. Hirings are up over 200. Uh, fantastic uh, book of hirings going on right now with the company. It's second to none. I've always give, uh, given Hylion uh, fair credit for their hiring uh, campaign that they've embarked on. It's fantastic. It's a sign of a growing company. And we are just approaching that very catalyst to start to um, put the rigor against each and every one of these positions in the company that is going to um, promote that uh, bottom line earnings, right? Uh, company just started making revenue last year, $200,000 of revenue booked last year. It's going to be very, very interesting to see what type of chunk they've taken out of the two to $3 million of revenue that they've projected for 2022 here. So um, this is gonna be interesting. Uh, if they come with a number of 150,000, I, 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 I will absolutely, if I don't already feel like throwing in the towel on this bitch, I, I don't know what fairy tale world they're living in, but to use verbiage like dominate the class eight space or be the leader in electrified powertrain solutions is just, is just beyond me at this point. Um, it, it, it is absolutely in la la land. Um, it's great to have a vision. It's great to have those types of goals and objectives, but how in the hell are you going to do that? And these are the things that I don't get from these Q&A interviews. I just don't get it. I, I don't understand where they're going with this project. I don't understand. Yeah, if 150 build slots are secured, you're talking about very anemic profits on those at even 30, 30, 30 or 35% margins that I award, they weren't even looking at doing that on the low volume numbers. They were looking at more of like 22 to 25% margins. The larger margins came from the mass uh, scale up, uh, which is understandable because the cost of equipment that goes into those uh, are given that, that higher discount to the more the volumes are provided. But how the hell are you gonna do that? How are you going to go from low volume production to high volume production at this point? These are all open-ended questions, guys. These are all meant to churn the conversation. I know there's going to be a lot of people who don't like this video. That's no problem. Hit the thumbs down is the one that goes just like this. Hit it. You're not, it's not going to bother me at all. It's not. I'm not going to, I'm not going to care. I'm going to come back next Sunday and I'm going to give what it is that I feel like is the absolute pulse at any given moment 
because I understand that in the acute, it doesn't really matter. Hylion could be right around the corner from a big, you know, 2,500 Amazon order. Where is it? Where's the discussions? Have they not picked up the phone one single time to Amazon? You're a CEO. You can do whatever you want. You're provided all that. What the hell is your board of directors doing? You don't think Elaine Chow can pick up the phone? What are you guys going to do? Are you going to wait till this thing does go to 50 cents a share? These are all questions that are fair at this point in understanding what they're doing in marching toward this integration into these large feeds that seemingly are interested in this. I haven't seen the interest. Maybe the industry is calling BS. Maybe the industry is not happy with the numbers, but here's the thing. I would love to understand a little bit more about what Hylian's doing and what industry is either pro or con on at this point. We don't know, which is easier for me to assume that they're just not having the discussions with them. They're just not. Have they approached Walmart? Let me go out on a limb and say no. Have they approached Amazon? Let me just go out on a limb and say no. Have they approached JB? Let me just go out on a limb and say no. Have they approached some of these other larger fleets and just said, hey, look, we're working through the Innovation Council right now. Here's our time frame. Here's our number. Okay, don't try to sell them on anything. Introduce them. Let them know what you got. Would you mind if we flew in and, and had a meeting with you? Is this going on? We don't know. It's all a big secret. You got to sign a non-disclosure agreement when you walk in the door. What are they non-disclosing about? What is so secretive? What is so secretive? The stock market says your business is worth nothing. What are you working so hard to protect? I think there's going to be a time here in our not so distant future where one of two things are going to happen. Number one, the reckoning. Okay, the reckoning where it is identified that the bears were right on this company. And the reckoning will be such that um, the original investor presentation um, is chalked up to be nothing full of just absolute lies and propaganda. This was an idea. Uh, we had a few fragile relationships with Agility and, and uh, uh, Tarek Sultan was able to put some elegant quotes out there, uh, but provide zero, zero bottom line benefit, granular benefit to the bottom line to the facilitation of this company. Cost him nothing to provide those comments to Hylion. Hylion did a great job advertising for agility this entire time, losing relationships like Dana along the lines, um, seemingly taking a backseat, going with Meritor on their e-axle, only to have Meritor uh, be acquired by Cummins. All these little things that have been put together over, over the time here, uh, supply chain shortages. I, I think, you know, if this company does emerge and we don't end up with this reckoning type of event, I think it's going to be chalked up as one of the absolute greatest accomplishments that I have ever seen in a company coming to public markets to face down a global pandemic, a supply chain issue, and a geopolitical campaign that is looking like it is going to go on for a long, long time, long time. And with the overhang of the SPAC debacle, with over 95% of those companies uh, down right now from its initial offering, being provided lofty valuations at $10 a share, that's funny anymore. I should just do a video on that very thing on SPAC 10 should be SPAC 1, $1. They should be provided as much value as they're provided on the onset to initial uh, angel investors in the company, which Hylion was about nine cents, nine cents. Is that what the company's worth? Uh, at this particular juncture, the stock market is saying the company's worth nothing. Uh, if I was a competitive CEO, I would be um, doing everything I could do to change the narrative, everything I could possibly do. I would have tweets out every single day, no problem. 
you know what, we're, we're, in, we're in a tough spot right now. We know we got to bridge it to 2024. Let me go ahead and yield this uh, interview to the Independent Investor Channel. Maybe it changes things. Maybe he does represent much more than just a, a, a handful of retail investors who come onto YouTube and they just bitch all the time about the stock going from 58 to three. And really, they should be okay with that. But they challenge what's going on and they want to know what's going on. And we haven't provided any type of insight on what is going on behind the scenes. Um, that's the reckoning. Number two is what I think is going to happen. This is the inevitable that I think is going to happen. This company is going to surprise to the upside. And it's going to surprise to the upside like I have never seen a company surprise to the upside before. I have a feeling that that's what's going to happen. Mark my freaking word. Here's the thing. Hylion's going to have to make it happen. They are. They're going to have to figure it out. And right now, doing the same old thing, uh, if I were just going to sit back and just tell you guys carte blanche, I love doing Hylion videos. I love it. Do I think it's in Hylion's best interest to, to come on and do an interview with the Independent Investor Channel with 30,000 subscribers? No, no, no. Not if you could tell me that Hylion was doing everything that they could possibly do behind closed doors to make what it is they've been so transparent about in realizing their vision. No, I don't, I don't want them wasting time with me. I'm, I'm nobody special. I'm a guy who initially bought a GoPro and an iMac and started this independent investor channel. Why? Because the technology allowed me to do so. Now I'm talking to you now through a Logi uh, 1080p uh, 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 cam camera, HD cam. Do I think uh, Thomas Healy, CEO, needs to be wasting his time doing interviews like that, which provide really very little benefit to the bottom line? I think it's provided probably more benefit to Jason with JMAC Investing uh, than it did for Hylion. I, I really do. I, I think if, if big companies are interested in this product, it's going to take the Hylion sales team to sit down across from big industry and say, here it is. This is our vision. Okay. This is what we're trying to do. And here's why. Here's what you need from us. And here's what it can, it can save you. We're ready to partner with you and walk lockstep in this into the future. You're going to be allowed to fly this beautiful green leaf of uh, green, which your customers are demanding. It's not going to be the influence of a social media community that's not going to provide that. It's not. And me as a shareholder, uh, I want to see him on CNN, excuse me, uh, CNBC. That's what I want to see. I want to see Yahoo interviews. I want to see Thomas Healy on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I do. I want to see Thomas Healy coming on on his own behalf, just like I do on my channel, and, and talk just off the cuff, from the heart. You think I script this? I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 words for this entire video. And I can guarantee I'll crank out 60 minutes for you guys to give you something to think about, to give you some type of explanation as to what's going on right now in the acute. And I'm experienced enough to share with you that I don't think what's going on in the acute is explanation at all. Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Doesn't change my conviction at all. And people watch the channel and they're like, well, Ryan, you're talking from a position of desperation in that you hold the shares and you have no other choice but to hold it. I don't really look at it the same way as you. I really don't. Um, did I ever see the stock go into $3.40? Did I ever see the stock going to zero value against its cash position? No, no, I didn't. Um, no investor could have forecasted that. No investor. It's just that simple. Um, this company has all the pedigree uh, and all of the uh, trademarks of an absolutely fantastic company. And all they have to do is get through a couple of milestones in the initial stages here. What we're aiming for here, guys, is 5,000 units. That's what we're aiming for. The investor presentation, and this was another question that I posed on Twitter, was what was the data that was looked at to, uh, to, to forecast to would-be investors 
that the company by 2024 would realize 15,000 ERX units and 15,000 hybrid EX units. There's a lot of, of bears out there that would say, Ryan, well, it was bullshit. Um, I can't dispute that at this point because I have not uh, garnered any type of answers to my questions with regard to the data that was being looked at. Did the supply chain push forward the, the, the projections? Okay, of course they did, right? But what was the data that was looked at on the onset to push those projections forward? 5,000 on a minimum of ERRX keeps the lights on. If we're talking about 10,000 additional ERX units, right? We're talking about we're talking about 1.2, 1.3 billion uh, in, in, in bottom line profit. We're talking about profit here. We are talking about profit with this company and we're talking about a, a valuation of eight to 10 billion, eight to 10 billion with those calculations. Right now, we're nowhere near that. And the market's sniffing it out. So what gives? Yeah, just give you some things to think about what we're, we're aiming for and, um, um, oh, Dividend Bloodhound is uh, another one. Shout out to him. I left a comment on his uh, his uh, uh, YouTube video that he did on Highly on this week. It was good. He dropped it yesterday. I appreciate those efforts. He's very good. He sees the company the same way as me. He's not so scathing as me. Um, he's actually, quite frankly, above board um, with his dialogue where I'm, I drop below the surface. I don't care. Um, I think a lot of people uh, need to answer to uh, what's going on right now. And I think Hylion needs to answer for what's going on. I do. But uh, he talked about the billion in revenue and that really is that, that top end of market penetration that we need to get to um, where we're looking at integrating to the fleet and having this. And that will represent for Hylion the mass scale integration that we're, we're looking for. And what are we looking to do this for? Are, are we looking to sell 150, uh, 150 hypertruck ERXs per year? Um, I throw that out there rhetorically, man. I really do. And I seemingly, there's a lot of people who are like, I'm happy with the progress. Really? Projections right now are 150 build slots. What, what, what gives beyond that? What, what is Peterbilt willing to give? What CRM is being provided to Hylion to show that there's uh, enough interest that they're going to be able to scale up? They're going to have to do thousands of units per year. They're going to do a thousand units, what, in the first year, thousands of units in the first year, only to have their product uh, fail in the durability category or not to drive that TCO bottom line benefit to the fleets. Nobody's going to return for buying it, right? Lots of uh, very interesting, critical steps. They've got the product to do it. I've seen enough with the prototype to know that they have the, the their, their idea is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Okay, Hylion's idea is absolutely phenomenal, but can it last seven years or is it only going to last five years? Every thousand miles that the Hypertruck ERX gets is that much more rigor on the system itself. Can it incur that seven years minimum, maybe nine to 10 years maximum of rigor over the system to ensure that those fleet owners can realize that those projections on the bottom line TCO. Are, are these not fair questions? If I was a CEO, I'd be ahead of them. Talk about it. If you don't have the answer, say, look, we, we're looking at this. We understand that this is where we need to go. Here's the projections. We're hoping to get there. This is, this is, what, we're, this is what we're marching toward. Here, here's our goals. And I haven't heard any of that. We've been able to secure 150 build slots for 2024. What, what in the F does that mean? I have no idea. And it's tough to, man, being an independent investor on an island seemingly. It doesn't seem like there's really a lot of other people out there. There's a few voices on Twitter that are kind of snarky. You know, they're funny. Uh, they're, they're striking at the same nerve I am in, in that maybe it's time to, I don't know, challenge a little bit what's going on. And maybe, I don't know, call a little bit BS on the information that's being made available to investors right now uh, with what's going on. I mean, how much longer are we going to let it go before we hit the panic button, the emergency button? You know, I, I think it's just absolutely um, appalling that we go through multiple phases, multiple days. And this is what gets to me the most multiple days without one single thing 
one single iota of news that's released at all with regard to progress. And it makes investors uh, presume that there's nothing going on. And that's the unfortunate part about it. It's that lean stretch that we're gonna be uh, uh, subject to in this bridging into next year uh, as we approach mass scale up, all right? Something that I'll be interested in paying attention to on this earnings is whether or not it was asked, actually, it was one of the good questions. Um, um, I'm sure Mark Fisher and, uh, um, or yeah, Mark, is it Mark Fisher uh, and Delaney? Mark Delaney, are they both named Mark? I, I don't know. Um, I think these fruitcakes need to crawl back in their cage, to be honest with you. I, the, it, it, it's, um, it's awesome nowadays in social media, you get to have a little bit of a level playing field with these morons that um, seemingly whatever path led them to be an analyst and people put them on a pedestal and they're like, oh, they're, they're a stock analyst. They must, everything they say is gospel. People who tune into me know that that's not the truth. It's just not the truth. Um, lemmings. Lemmings don't like me because they're like, look at this regular guy in his blue t-shirt, man, talking about a, a, a reputable stock analyst. He's not a reputable analyst. He's wrong, less, uh, he's wrong more than half the time. It's not reputable. Uh, I would suggest maybe being good at your job. I don't know. I think it'd be great. But the question was asked whether or not they were going to need to uh, call upon new funds to advance their business plan. Uh, through 2024, and Sherry Baker doubled down and said, no, that will not be the case. Uh, I think this is key. Um, I actually think if, if Hylion came out and said, you know what, we're, we're diluting the shares uh, by another 200 million shares, let's just double the share float. Let's just double it. And we're going we're gonna to provide uh, liquidity to the, to the system. We're going to dilute shareholders down. We're going to go and issue another 200 million shares. There's 177 million in the float now. Let's just double it to hell with it. Let's double it 200. It's a nice round number. Just dilute the hell out of shareholders and just fund their own uh, initiative in becoming their own OEM uh, and maybe just going abroad to hell with the domestic market at this point. If we can't get certification here, I guarantee we can get it abroad. Just go abroad and go big right now. It's seemingly been a better path for Nikola as much as they've been beat down uh, in, in the marketplace, as well as uh, Hyzon. Uh, Hyzon's in global markets right now, you know? But it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't foresee that happening. Uh, I do foresee that we are uh, remaining on track with the current business plan. That has been shared with, with us uh, with regard to uh, current funding, uh, current burn rate, and marching toward what they seem to think is going to be uh, the catalyst in way of the dominoes falling and stepping into something that is a little bit more impressive than 150 units uh, going into 2024, okay? It's not 2023, no, no, 2024, that's what I meant, okay? Um, Hylion has always boasted that they have the solution now, they don't, they don't. The only solution that they have right now is the hybrid EX, and by Thomas Healy's admission, um, that's dead on arrival. So nobody wants to order it anyway. So I, I don't know where this two to three million in revenue is going to come from here. Uh, hopefully they've taken a nice chunk out of this because we sure as hell haven't seen any news on selling any of these units uh, thus far here. And we're almost into May uh, of 2022. And we've heard nothing on, uh, on sales uh, except for what was reported on the Q4 uh, earnings report last year, and that those hybrid EXOs were, were going to be the sole contributor to this two to three million dollars in top end revenue for the company. All right, but she did double down and say that we, they would not need any more funding uh, to um, to see their current business plan and projections through. Um, that's somewhat good news. I will see uh, on this next earnings call what type of progress that they've made uh, to to that. I will close out the video and say this, uh, we are in a dismal place with the stock price. What I've seen multiple times, and we've been here before, the stock has jumped a dollar and you get all these people that are FOMO buying the stock at like 460, 470, 480. You want to buy the stock, I'd buy it here. Nobody's talking about it. Even I'm pissed off, right? You can tell my tone and tenor. And a lot of people have shut the video off already anyway. They don't stick with me through this crap. It's no problem. Nobody watches my bearish thesis on Hylion anyway, because they all just believe 
uh, and they don't want to look below the surface as to, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's some questions to be asked here. I don't know. Maybe they feel like all they need to do is just invest in a hundred shares and just hold it inevitably without asking any types of questions. And I think there's a good school of thought out there that's just like to hell with it. Uh, I'm just going to buy the stock and, and I'm going to wait five years. Maybe that's the remedy. Uh, I don't know. I would invite you to leave your comments at the bottom of the stock here at 340. We're entering into a week here. I, 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 I have no idea. Uh, seemingly, Hylion is providing a uh, tone and tenor that um, we're all supposed to be just all right with this. Maybe we are. Um, maybe, maybe it's my deficiency. Maybe we should just accept this. Uh, maybe we should just uh, celebrate all of the gifted shares that have been provided to all of the board of directors that, to my assessment, have provided zero, zero value to the company. Um, I've provided more value uh, on the independent investor channel to highly on holdings than Elan, Elan Chow. Would you like me to repeat it? I have provided more real, tangible, in the trenches benefit than Elan Chow. And she's been gifted what? few hundred thousand shares all the board of directors they were all gifted their shares at the same time what the f for pick up the phone start calling people i don't know what to tell you let's go you're going to wait for real advocates i'm not a real advocate i'm a social media influencer you're going to wait for the lawsuits to come through you're going to wait for the uh, uh legal eyes to scrutinize that initial May 2020 investor presentation. And you're going to, they're going to actually extrapolate what it is that in your best interest and projections for the future. Yeah, I know there are disclaimers on every page. I get it. I totally get it. But you just can't say whatever you want to say and then just disclaim it and, and, and get away with it. You can't do that. Okay. There has to be at some point where you start to, substantiate, provide some merit behind. The agility order was thrown out there willy-nilly thousand. Hypertruck ERX, what's come of it? Zero. You put them on the Hypertruck ERX Council, uh, Innovation Council, what's come of it? Zero. There's been a quote that's been provided on the Hylion.com website. That's all we've got out of it. No bottom line, no nothing. Agility trucks, I don't hardly see them on the road. They're all small trucks. Penske, same thing. I don't understand why they were even named part of the Hypertruck ERX Council. I don't get it. Can you explain why? Explain why. Agility is a huge company. You're telling me that they can't make one single pledge to this if they're that convicted on it. The question becomes, are they convicted on it? When all of these and many other projections were made on the onset, and here we are, none of them have come to fruition. None of them. And I think we're marching toward one of those two things, either the catalyst or the day of reckoning. And the verdict is out as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, this has been a, a little bit more of a negative overtone video for the company. Uh, I don't care. That's what they've garnered. They need to surprise on this earnings call. They need to provide some color and clarity around what in the hell they're doing with regard to advancing their technology, leveraging their technology into something else, hydrogen fuel cell, I don't care. They need to provide some level of color around what in the hell they're doing to make money. Because at this particular juncture, the stock market says that the company is worth absolutely nothing. Zero. Hylion needs to get on the horse here in changing the narrative and providing the marketplace, not me. Okay. They need to provide this clarity to everybody because wake up. It is a publicly traded company. And then number one, not number 16, not number 48 on the list of a CEO is to drive shareholder value. Drive shareholder value. We're all with you. We all need to be getting out of this funk that we're in here, in this absolute bloodbath. The stock has an absolute no end in sight type of perspective right here. And nobody's excited about touching your company right now. Volumes are down. Nobody's buying your company right now. Nobody's buying your story. Nobody's providing any type of validation to what you're putting down 
right now as a company. It's time to change the narrative. And I suggest that you do everything you can possibly do in this bridging year to get us to this eventual catalyst that we're looking for and not this reckoning of the company to where all of these things come to the surface here. And there wasn't really any whim of validation behind any of these projections whatsoever. And we've been duped as retail investors yet again on a comp company that's promising the world, promising to be the leader in the class eight space, promising to provide a vision for the future, promising to be the dominant player in electrified power train solutions. And they haven't dominated a thing, nor have they provided any type of clarity on how they're going to provide that roadmap into 2023, 2024, and beyond. Get to work. I'll continue to provide my advocacy. Remember to kick over and tweet this to at Thomas Healy, at Hylion, at Hylion Stock. That way we can put what little bit of pressure we can with social media. My resources are dry. I don't know what else to do as opposed to send the guy a personal certified letter to his house. I have no idea what else to do. I'll continue to foot stomp the message here. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Subscribe to the message. Share the message with anybody out there that you know is invested in the company, wants to become part of the dialogue here, part of the community as we grow and evolve with this company here. It's a two-year company, guys. Hasn't been out very long. It's a pre-revenue company. They just turned out their first revenue here, but we need to monitor over the next year, year and a half on progress that they're making on top-line revenue projections and realizing that bottom-end profit that is so, so important. We are a long way away from that mark here, guys. We just want a little bit more color around where we are in progressing toward that end. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future.